everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and this is Indy, my 12 and a half year old dog. It is currently shedding season, and he is leaving little bits of fur everywhere. And so I thought that I would use today's video as an opportunity to dye some of his fur uh, for a little inside joke that Keith and I have had. We used to joke that it would be really fun for Halloween to get some kind of neon green outfit so Indy could be GFP or green fluorescent puppy. Sort of a play on the green fluorescent protein which is a tool for cell biology that is probably a reason why I love fluorescence to begin with. And so it was just like a sciencey kind of pun and we thought that that would be fun. Of course, we would never dye our dog green. That is not something that uh, we would ever do. But I thought that because he gets these big mats behind his ear ears, maybe I can felt some of his fur into the shape of a dog so I can make, and if I dye that then a fluorescent green, we can make a green fluorescent puppy. So I will be using acid dyes today to dye some indie fur that is not connected to his body. Uh, let me reiterate that when you're using acid dye powders, you should be doing so away from young children and pets. I always wear a deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves when I'm dealing with the dry dye powder. And do not, do not dye your pets with acid dyes. Do not, do not, do not. So let's go have some silly fun and make a felted dog shape out of my dog's shedded fur. It is springtime and Indy is shedding, so I combed out some of his fur and Keith 3D printed me an approximate American Eskimo shaped cookie cutter so I could attempt to needle felt some of Indy's wool into the shape of a dog. Now for years I've talked about incorporating some indie fur with some yarn so I could spin it. I do have a headband that is 50% husky fur, 50% uh, wool, and it's so warm. And so this is still something I would like to explore at some point, but today I wanted to give needle felting a try. And I figured it might work because Indy can get some really great mats behind his ears. But I actually found it really challenging to take the needle and sort of push it through the fiber. I did remember I had like a four point needle felting tool. And so I brought that over and that helped. And I got very optimistic because it really did look like I was getting a great pet shape. But then I lifted it up from the like block I was using for felting and I had really pushed a lot of those furs into the block and we got more of a blob. So I worked to sort of felt the reverse side and uh, give still some shape with some legs, even though I don't think we're really ASCII shaped anymore, but we do have a dog. We do have a dog. We have a felted, Indie fur dog that now we can dye a fluorescent green. <laughs> so after taking some photos of Indy with his little mini me, uh, I went and to pre-soak this, this fiber. Uh, and I've pre-soaked it for, goodness, over an hour? Maybe two hours or so, trying to get it well saturated. So, oh, I should have weighed it so I know how much dye to use. Well, we're gonna just have to guess how much we want to use for this project. <laughs> uh, I have dyed dog fur in the past. Uh, it was an unknown breed and it does dye okay. So we'll see how this all goes. But make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video because uh, I have a little treat for you at the end. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves to measure out the dye. And since this is a video where I'm talking about my dog, whenever I'm dealing with acid dye powder, I make sure that Indy is not in the room. He's in another room. Um, if my kids are home, they are in another room. So that way, the only person in the vicinity of the acid dye powder is me wearing my protective gear. I weighed out around a quarter gram of dye, plus or minus a bit. I figure that this is a ton of dye for our little felted dog <laughs> that we're gonna attempt to die. Uh, and then I dissolved it in some hot tap water. I figure we may have some dye left behind. That is what it is. We'll see how things go. 
but I feel I need to once again reiterate, I am dyeing dog fur. I am not dyeing my actual dog. No dye is actually coming into contact with Indy. Please don't use acid dyes on your pets. <laughs> My little felted dog that is looking quite sheep-like <laughs> has soaked for a while. There's still, oh, there's a little dye on my fingertips. There's definitely some areas in the center, I think, where the liquid has not penetrated very much yet. You can see some of those shapes that look more opaque in the center. I think those are some just bigger um, bits and bobs. <laughs> okay, but now I'm going to take our dye and we're going to pour it onto the indie fur here uh, in this shoe box. I haven't added any acid yet, but I'm curious what it'll look like. Part of me realized that I should have used uh, Jacquard's Chartreuse because it is a color. It is the fluorescent green I like more, but Radioactive just also has a fun name and is a good fluorescent green, so why not? Now, we have no acid in here, so we will need to add some. And I don't know how much water is in here, maybe around eight cups, approximately. Oh, that was a lot of acid that I just added to my secondary container, but let's add four tablespoons of white vinegar. Eventually we will heat set this, but I was just curious to see how quickly some of this might bind to our little creature. And one of the tests I'm doing right now is just squeezing it out and there's a little bit of color in there, but I have a feeling it's going to take a lot of time. I maybe should have scoured the fiber to remove some of the oils, but <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> I was afraid if I went and started just boiling this that we might lose some of the shape. And so that's why I'm thinking of this cold process technique because what we should eventually see in theory is more color in our fiber than what we're seeing in the dye bath as it is all going and starting to bind. Um, but this will take time and so I'm going to go ahead and put a lid on this shoe box and let things sit for a little while because we'll see how this cold process goes and then we will heat set it in the end, but let's just be patient, see how it goes. I also wanted to add that I highly doubt we have even 10 grams of fiber in here. It's my mistake from not weighing it out. So the proportion of dye to fiber is really, really weighed heavily, weighted heavily on the dye side. So we're, I doubt we're gonna absorb all of this color into the fiber, but we'll see how much we can do and maybe we'll throw in a mini skein or something at some point to soak up the rest. But anyway, it is about noon on Monday, so we'll see how long I end up waiting with this one. It is now Thursday morning, and so it's been almost three days. And what's interesting is, check this out. So we have a lighter color in the center, but this is the area that was floating. And this side is darker. So we have been absorbing dye at room temperature and I think that we've got some really cool breaking too. Uh, I observed this last night, <laughs> but when I was gonna just flip it over and then I was like, wait, this effect is cool. I'm gonna kind of leave it be. So now I wanna heat set it. And to do this, I'm gonna transfer the dye bath into a dedicated dye pot add my little friend and we're gonna go and start heat setting this. I did have an interesting comment on a video where I dyed a mohair silk blend because I was nervous about the mohair felting and I was told that mohair doesn't really felt. I wonder if the same is true for dog fur. I mean clearly I have some kind of felting here but it did not felt as easily as wool does and I know that the structure of wool is different from other hairs so 
I don't know entirely, but that's food for thought. Now, I'm not expecting to absorb 100% of the color, but I do want to bring this to a simmer and then heat it for 30 minutes. I've reduced the heat to low, and what's interesting to note is that that halo effect we saw, I think, is gone. It's possible that this is flipped over. No, it's, it's different. I guess the heat is causing more of the dye to go into the yarn, which is looking not that neon, to be honest. Um, but it's been heating for 30 minutes. I'm going to turn off the heat, and I'm going to leave the dog that feels so weird. The dog fur in the pot to cool completely. Maybe we'll soak in some more of the color and then we'll wash it. I truly am surprised. Oh good, it's cool. Hopefully when I do this, I'm not gonna disrupt the shape too much. <laughs> I'm surprised how much of the color did bind to our little, I mean, it looks a lot more like a sheep. A lot more like a sheep, but anyway, it's been a long time since I've needle folded anything, and this felt overall a little bit tougher to do. Okay, it's holding its shape. I mean, I'm not as concerned about bleeding as I would be for any other project because this is really going to be just like a display piece. And the other funny thing is I'm not worried about felting because, well, we tried to felt it. I'm just, I realize I'm off camera. I'm trying to squeeze it out, which hopefully, well, we still have separation of our legs. There's not really a tail because then his tail goes over the top of his head. But honestly, this worked better than I thought. Now, I think if I'm ever gonna spin indie fur, I'm gonna wanna blend it with something else, but it absorbed color well. The areas that didn't are areas that I made a lot more matted. So anyway, I'm going to quickly sort of roll it in some paper towels to help remove, and I'm squeezing the crap out of it, to remove some of that extra uh, liquid and in doing so check that out there is some staining on there that is not what we want to see when we're doing anything hmm I'm gonna do this again I mean, maybe I'm seeing a hint of some transfer it's hard to say I'm gonna set this aside carefully to dry out and then we'll see check the fluorescence. I'm not going to, I'm trying not to care too much about bleeding or anything um, because really I might just hang this somewhere. I mean, <laughs> we'll see, uh, but I'm going to let it dry. Okay, we are in my closet so I can remove ambient light. Yes, Indy, that's, that's the little you. Okay, we're going to turn off the light. Steady, Indy, and turn on the black light. Oh, Indy. Are you confused? <laughs> oh my. Okay, let's let's see here. I see some glow. And yeah, we have fluorescence in here. But it's a little interesting. The edges of this aren't very fluorescent. It's really more of the interior matted areas. And I have a hypothesis for this. Let's flip it over. <laughs> You're being such a good boy. Oh no. <laughs> Andy wants to be released. Uh, I have a feeling that the edges of this absorbed more of the non-fluorescent pigment and those denser areas were what got what was left. Uh, so I'm actually really surprised. <laughs> I think ultimately it comes down to proportion and under white light looking at the felted dog again it looks like a deeper green it doesn't look like the fluorescent neon radioactive I am used to uh, so I have a feeling I should have weighed my felted dog <laughs> and 
after weighing it, then use that to determine how much dye to use. Because it's possible a lot of that dye that didn't absorb was that more fluorescent yellow. And we got a disproportionate amount of that blue pigment in there, which reduced the fluorescence. You're such a good boy. Yes, you're such a good boy. But anyway, our faulted dog is a bit of a far cry from this cookie cutter we tried. But it did fluoresce a little bit. So we successfully did make a green fluorescent puppy just out of fur. Oh dear. <laughs> I really hope that you have all enjoyed this video and to thank you for watching the whole thing, here's a little bit of a treat. Uh, today only, April Fool's Day 2024, you can use the coupon code APRILFOOL24 in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop for 24% off your order. These April Fool's Day videos are a little bit of a fun tradition that I've had. I've done things like play Minecraft, have my husband host a video, and even say that Chemnitz was changing hands and have a little video of my then toddler who's now 10 years old. There is a whole April Fool's playlist if you want to go back and check all of the silly things that I've done in years past. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe and turn on notifications. While I do enjoy the, the occasional silly video, I do post yarn dyeing content twice a week. And actually we did do something and learn something here today. <laughs> and just subscribing is the biggest way you can help support the content that you see here. Thank you so much. I know buddy. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>